Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome from wherever you join us. Thank you so much for the time you've afforded us today. We really welcome you to this uh, number 16 in our webinar series. And he we're here today to talk about the changes and improvements made to Nav Tracker and also, uh, sorry, Nav Station and also passage planning. I'll take you through an agenda, but first I'll introduce myself. I'm Richard Northover. I run the NavTor UK, so I'm the managing director of NavTor UK. Um, just some housekeeping uh, as I take you across to the agenda. The housekeeping is the platform we use here is called 23. For the best performance, you should use it in Google Chrome, as was described in the leaflet about it. Uh, the aim of these webinars is to spread knowledge and to make sure that everyone's getting the most value out of NavTor uh, on their vessels. So today's presentation, as I said, is going to be made about NavStation and version 6.3, which we're very proud to launch, and the new passage planning template, which comes with that, which has got significant changes. Please note in 23, there are sections for chat and there are sections for questions. Please feel free to put questions through at any point. We will uh, have a dedicated question and answer session, which is where we find there is the most value because that's the interaction. That's where we find out the burning questions from the floor. So please feel free to add your questions at any time. We will put those up on the screen and we'll answer those in, uh, in a dedicated session at the end. The chat function is great, and we please, if you want to put questions in there, that's fine. We won't be able to display those questions, but we'll certainly review those questions and, and ask them during the, uh, the presentation. So it really remains for me to welcome you and thank you for the time. NavTor is all about development. It's all about supporting uh, both the customer and vessels and offices. And it's our pleasure to release this latest version, which has been developed in uh, conjunction with our client base and questioning what people need, but also looking at latest rules and regulations to make sure that our products best fit what is expected in the marketplace. So I'm going to, without, um, I'm going to move across to a slide which I've used before, and it's, I'm not going to apologize for that because it's quite a useful slide. It talks about our ecosystem. So I've talked before that the only piece of hardware NavTor puts on a vessel is the nav box. And the nav box is there specifically to manage communications from the data cloud, which come out of the vessel onto the nav box, which are then distributed through the vessel, of course, through to Ectis, but also to back of bridge through our many services on board. So this is nav station, which we're talking about today, new nav reporting, and also digital logbooks. That data is all harvested and brought back into the nav box, which is again transported back into the nav cloud. From the nav cloud, we can distribute out to our services ashore, which means that everyone is working on the same data in real time or as close to real time as possible. So now I'd like to introduce two of my colleagues who will take you through today's presentations. So I'm gonna introduce Vladimir, who is the product manager of NavStation, and also Timo, who's recently been promoted to e-navigation director from the product management team. So without further ado, I'd like to say thank you for the time, and I'll pass you across, first of all, to Vladimir. Thanks a lot, Richard. I'm going to share my screen now, the magic word. Hmm. Yeah, now you see it. So. Welcome everyone. I just want to want to join this uh, warm words from Richard. Warm welcome from Naftor. Warm welcome from uh, sunny, Nor sunny and snowy Norway. Christmas is just around the corner, so we can uh, with honor call this webinar a Christmas webinar actually, because we're going to show you something interesting, something very fascinating, and something that we have been, you know, developing for the last uh, last time uh, for the last few months. I would say I would. Uh, <laughs> Uh, wanted to say, but nav station, uh, all about um, what's new in terms of a nav station. So we will build up today's webinar. We go through a few slides. Just uh, fasten your seatbelt. Get ready for uh, something interesting to come. No any turbulence. Just uh, 
pleasure flight throughout the Naftor products and especially Nav Station. Uh, <clears throat> where we go through uh, what we have achieved. Uh, so we use few PowerPoint slides, as I said already, and then we will do the live demo. So um, my captain, uh, Timo, uh, will uh, put us through the, uh, the, the, the major things that we achieved within the Navstation uh, 6.3. So 6.3, that's the, that's the internal uh, uh, version and name or a number of Navstation. And uh, now let's, uh, let's uh, go. So first that we achieved uh, within the product is called Passage Monitoring Dashboard. Uh, so this is simply a quick snapshot tool that will provide you with uh, everything around current active passage, sensor information, weather uh, graph, uh, wind and waves warnings and average speed. So simply saying this is a, a first step uh, to make some sort of a, a dashboard inside the NAV station, which will be focused on showing you what is happening right now. Uh, if you have any passages, what is your uh, speed for the last 6, 12, uh, 24 hours? Uh, if, for example, you're conscious <laughs> about the, the charter party closes uh, around the speed limits, around the, the maximum and minimum speed. What is the, the weather along the route? And for example, at the middle of that picture, you see some of the graph uh, hatched by red color. Uh, we all understand that red color is something uh, suspicious. In this case, it is something alarming. And uh, for this particular case, it just uh, displays us that uh, somewhere between 7 and, uh, uh, and 9 of December will most likely be facing very heavy waves. Uh, and uh, you see that there is a restrictions for this waves, which is 5 meters. Uh, so this is, again, this is a dashboard that will provide everything around the passage, but also we will include here the, the distances and time of arrival to the environmental layers, uh, the, the delays in terms of uh, uh, arrival time, or if there is any bad weather that is coming along. Um, so uh, this, the, the dashboard is already there. The dashboard uh, can be used, and the dashboard is something that, of course, we will be evolving uh, from version to version. version. Next one we implemented is all about e-publication. So um, uh, NAV station is uh, also um, a room for uh, all the uh, electronic publications. And it is not only limited by the Admiralty electronic nautical publications, but also the flag state approvals, the IMOs, the, the BIMCOs, the Intertanco, the Marisec, the Viverby even. And, uh, and, and, and all over the other publishers uh, and all over the other e-publications. So, um, and we got it implemented. We added the ability to filter, to do the filtering uh, with respect to all the books. And uh, currently on this uh, picture, you see that I can, I can filter it based on the publisher or based on the publication status, like, uh, okay, show me everything. Uh, that is having the new editions or show me everything that I have archived. So I can easily archive those publications that are withdrawn, for instance, or those publications that I don't want to have in my <clears throat> main bookshelf. So this is all uh, added. This is all now available in this uh, Navstation new version. Also, what we added here is the, the restrictions in terms of printout. Uh, so uh, major uh, publishers are now uh, uh, restricting the number of pages that uh, the one can print uh, per day. And it is actually 10% of a book. So simply saying, if you have a book of 100 pages, then per day you will be able to print out only 10 pages. Simple math, but uh, something, something to follow and to consider. Next one is maneuvering assistance. So... Um, one of the monitoring part of Navstation, the tool called Maneuvering Assistant. So this is a tool that uh, is designed to be used for uh, precise mooring, precise berthing, precise maneuvering around different areas. For example, in this picture, uh, you see how the vessel is maneuvering around the, the, the oil field. And uh, I have deliberately created the, the fender lines and uh, I'm just uh, maneuvering across it. And uh, the system shows me uh, the distances on my port side from the bow and from the aft to those lines. 
but also it shows me the picture on my bow and on the aft and longitude uh, sorry speed uh, this is showing me the speed on the bow and on the aft and the longitudinal speed in a, a very precise centimeters per second unit so um, when my speed is kind of low when i'm using the thrusters uh, mooring my bow on, or, or the aft, I want to see uh, what is the speed in not just the knots, but also in the centimeters per second. Quite a useful thing, which got uh, implemented uh, and now available in this uh, tool that is called Maneuvering Assistant. And also consider that this Maneuvering Assistant can also be used as the backup of backup. Uh, so in case of failure, uh, this can be used as the, as the plotter tool. Um, and of course, uh, other technology improvements got implemented in the nav station. Other, um, uh, you know, uh, using the the modern uh, 64 bit, for instance, or using the the modern u u user interface, and so on and so forth. So this is uh, all in line with the with the technology to make sure that performance is on a, on its best uh, and, and quality level. Uh, next one is the passage plan, and this is what uh, we would like to delve deeper, uh, because the passage plan is, I would say, the core, one of the core of the entire uh, product. And uh, in this one, we we spend quite quite some time because we're actually looking into the industry, listening to your wishes, your needs, your requirements, and also trying to fulfill the requirements that is coming from those bodies and organizations like Okimf, Intertanko, and, and, and different other guides and, and requirements. And uh, when it comes to passage plan, it is actually divided into two things. So one thing is the, the settings, and uh, you see what we have implemented with respect to the passage plan settings. So now the passage plan settings is consisting of four uh, tabs. They're shown on top of this picture. It's default values. Again, the table where the one, your seafarers will adjust the default values for the passage plan. Uh, and inside the default values for the passage plan, especially for the underkill clearance calculation, uh, we have extended it uh, to meters, percentage of static draft, percentage of dynamic draft, and percentage of uh, vessel breadth. So that's again, that's according to your procedures, according to your SMS, according to uh, nautical publications as well. And uh, you can uh, select it uh, for every passage leg and they can be different to each other. Uh, next one is the, uh, the all about additional information to be used inside the passage plan. And this additional information can be port information so per port search range is added uh, to like, like a picking range, meaning that for the arrival and departure waypoints, the passage plan will be listing all the stuff from the ports, terminals, or jetty. And it will not be just limited by names, but also by the density and, uh, and precise names for the terminals and, and, and jetties. And another one, is all about overhead clearance calculation and with respect to the tights. So um, we all know that the base tight stations are having the reference height uh, for the for the for the height. But if the reference height, which is RH in this uh, picture, if reference height is not available, then the uh, the highest high water can be used instead. So this will be used for, for calculation again of the overhead clearance uh, calculation. Next one is the, the passage plan settings. And when it comes to the passage plan settings, uh, we have now divided it into the initial underkill clearance calculation, especially which Paris formula to use. And uh, one of two can be uh, selected here. Uh, one is more uh, conservative with the den denominator 20, another one less conservative, uh, conservative with the denominator 30. These are all the, uh, the, 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 the formulas that are coming from ship stability work from Dr. Barris. And, uh, and also the CATSOC. So um, the CATSOC can be removed right now from the initial UKC calculation. 
and uh, that's according to the intertanko that's according to the to the real practice actually because uh, there are some ports where uh, kazok is simply not available or there are some ports where kazok is not needed simply saying uh, next one is the of the is the full UKC calculation and when it comes to full UKC calculation then there are more than just two UKC or uh, squat formulas and uh, in addition to Barris 1 and Barris 2 there are also equation uh, formulas uh, for confined waters mainly with appropriate coefficient for example if you take a look at the bottom left uh, formula which is Barris equation medium and that is including this additional coefficient k. Uh, so there is nothing new. This formula was also used in the previous passage plan templates, but it's uh, worth to to consider that it is still here. It is still available to to to, to use and calculate. Overhead clearance calculation got also extended. So um, now it can calculate the air draft in particular by two different ways one is using just the minimum draft or another one is considering the trim uh, so this is what we didn't have in the past and this is what uh, you were asking for and this is what actually the the, the industry trend and also the the limits the restrictions for for the bridges and for the cables uh, by other words when the calculated value should be highlighted by red uh, this is something that you are setting inside the passage plan settings. Again, as, as, as we said before, we will show you that live in the product. So. Next one is the all about this Kadzok. So um, Kadzok is the category zone of confidence. This is simply the accuracy of the depth or any other objects that we have in the ENC charts. And... Uh, there are two things for this. One is to ignore uh, the Kazakh uncertainty when, for example, your root lag with its corridor is uh, within the uh, boundaries of dredged or maintain depth area. It's obvious that if the channel is dredged, then uh, probably you can you can you can ignore the Kazakh consideration for this. But another one, and which is important, is the definitions of Kazakh. Uh, marks that are D or U, delta or uniform. Because if you if you take a look on, on the nautical publications, you will see the definitions in terms of percentages to depth, uh, plus minus appropriate meters. You, you will see the recommendations for A1, A2, B, and C, but you will most likely not see and not find anything with respect to D and U. And uh, for this, we implemented the ability to set the D and U restrictions right from the passage plan settings. But of course, this, this is something that your seafarers should be using when it comes to the SMS and internal shipping company procedures. So this is all about how shipping companies set those D and U ZOX uh, for, uh, for those uh, category zones of confidence. And now this is uh, this is available. So this can be adjusted manually, and then the appropriate Kazakh values for those delta and uni uniform areas will then be reflected in the passage plan. And safety parameters. So there are four major safety parameters that are existing in, for example, EGDIS for, for ages, which is safety contour, safety depths, shallow contour, and depth, depth deep contour. And uh, usually, from year to year, those safety parameters were set manually. But <laughs> shipping companies, managers, seafarers, everyone who knows things, this, they were asking, okay, if I set my draft, can uh, you guys, uh, they were referring to manufacturers, can you guys calculate the safety contour and safety depths? And finally, we can answer, yes, we can. So right now, the safety parameters can either be calculated, and right now you see the formulas. So for example, safety contour can be calculated considering draft, uh, UKC with appropriate uh, uh, corrections, and the height of tides. And then the, the safety depth, shallow contour, and deep contour uh, can be calculated more, more simply. Uh, and for example, deep contour, that's the st static draft multiplied by two. 
as the nautical publication recommends, but of course, uh, this can be modified. So now with Proud, we can say that um, the safety parameters cannot be calculated and it's not needed to, to put them manually uh, any longer. But of course, the manual setup remains. So um, any of those parameters can be set up manually, like it's uh, shown here for the safety depth. You see this is set to the S per default table. And inside the default table, the CFRs, they will just set those values uh, by themselves manually. Uh, printout. So <laughs> in the previous versions of NavStation and uh, templates, the passage plan could have consisted of around 100 pages. And uh, you did not have any chances to, to reduce it or to select what to print. Now you have all those uh, tools. Now you can easily say that, OK, I would like to, call to, to print only part A, which is all about navigational and scheduling information, and part B, which is all about, about UKC. And that's it. And then you will get, instead of, let's say, 100 pages, you will get just uh, just three or four pages maximum. So that's, again, that's up to you how many paper you want to save and how many uh, ink you want to consume. Vessel particulars got also um, extended, and it is now um, divided into two settings. One is simple vessel particulars, which is length and beam from the CCRP, from the reference point. But another one is the vessel dimensions. And the vessel dimensions is more complex, but uh, I believe uh, you guys recognize everything and there is nothing extremely new uh, to you when you take a look on those APPs, FPPs, or uh, length between perpendiculars or free boat or length defined in the International Convention of Load Lines or distance after midship draft mark or distance from the aft to the highest point of a vessel and it is shown here under x and it is set to 11 meters in my case but it can be more uh, if for example your vessel is having cranes which are higher than the must uh, head and uh, i believe uh, you concluded why it is needed it is needed to be able to to calculate the overhead clearance considering the 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 the, the, the draft uh, right at the appropriate point and uh, to the right hand side, we also set up the, the draft for different um, waters for tropical fresh water, for just fresh water, for tropical summer, winter, and winter North Atlantic. So, this is also can uh, be set right now, and this will then be reflected in the passage plan accordingly. So, quick scope with respect to the template. So, uh, all we said before was about the settings. Now we are moving into the template itself. And the template, the, the latest template, which we call Tankers B4, it is available only for Navstation 6.3, and it is a brand new template. It is completely different uh, to the, all the previous templates that Navtool uh, have been developing. And uh, to make it short and sweet, it is consisting of five major things. So it is cal cal all the calculation inside is now considering the all KIMF and Intertank recommendations. Safety parameters can now be calculated automatically. What to print selection can now be made. UKC calculation got extended as well as overhead clearance calculation also. And general optimization for the number of pa pages. So this is also being done. For instance, in, in the past, we were listing the, the charts for every root leg. So, and uh, from time to time, you probably saw the, uh, the repetition. So the same charts were listed several times. Now we don't do this. Now we just uh, mentioned the, uh, the, the segments, the legs that will uh, be uh, needing this or that uh, EC charts or, or publications. And uh, last but not least is something that uh, we were facing from time to time uh, in terms of questions and feedback and user needs and even requirements. And this is the passage plan updates. What is this? 
let me just give you a few examples. So these are the the uh, few messages that we got from, uh, of course, we'll not disclose from whom, but from uh, the very important customers. And uh, you can read it, especially the things marked by yellow. Additional sheet, deviation from passage plan. And this is uh, what was the, let's say, uh, the proposal that we would like to have inside the passage plan additional page, which will just highlight the deviation from the passage plan. So the deviation from the passage plan, what is this uh, uh, by other words? It's for instance, you have planned the route, you have created the passage plan and you got it approved and you set the sales. So you are at sea and uh, you've got some plans, some new plans, or you've got some bad weather uh, in front of you, or uh, uh, there is a, a, a long queue in the arrival. Uh, so the, term, the terminal will not be ready at your arrival time. So you need to reschedule. And uh, it was needed to redo the passage plan from the scratch. Now this can be made just by updating the existing approved passage plan. And uh, here we also have another uh, requirements or another feedback. Very straightforward question. If the vessel slows down or there is a delay, uh, then it would obviously be a deviation from the passage plan. Would it be correct to consider that the passage plan should become a live document? And now the answer is yes. And this is what we have. So that's the real picture from, uh, from the latest nav station and the late, latest template. So um, the idea is that the approved passage plan can be updated and then you can uh, move this or that waypoint, amend your schedule or, uh, or uh, add, add something new to this. Uh, and then when you approve this revision or approve this update, the passage plan will generate the list of changes and this list of changes will be reflected like this page uh, like it is shown on this page so it will be the the passage plan revision log and inside this revision log we will see the date the time the affected waypoints what happened to this waypoint and the reason for the update or for the revision so this reason is something that your seafarers will be able to set up manually so they will explain what was the reason of my, why have I updated my passage plan? That's it from my end. So um, that was again, just, just a, a snapshot of what we have achieved. You see, uh, I spent around uh, 20 minutes uh, just to explain to you what we have been developing for uh, six or seven months. But now we'll, I would like to give the stage to, to, to our captain Timo. Uh, who will uh, show us the live product and uh, talk more deeper about the, the passage plans. So, Tima, stage is yours. Thank you, Vladimir. Hi, and nice to see all of you again. It has been quite a while since we had our last webinar. Um, happy to see uh, the engagement of the audience, especially in the chat, uh, trying to answer the questions as far as I can. I think Vladimir will take over from me right now. Um, so <laughs> uh, while I'm presenting, so thank you, Vladimir. Thank you for the introduction. And I think, yeah, um, already as Vladimir has shown, we have done really significant changes in the last release of NAV station and, and in particular passage plan, uh, because it's such an important, uh, important feature we have within our software. Uh, we have thousands of users on it uh, and the number is growing and 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 of course you know um, we always aim to launch new features uh, new products to the market but um, you know we we definitely do not forget about uh, the existing uh, products which we have and the uh, the existing um, uh, keep improving them and, and, and assure compliance with, with all these uh, new industry standards uh, and, and also, you know, create flexibility. Uh, uh, so, so make it as flexible as possible so you can reflect your uh, ISM and company SMS procedures within the passage plan. Um, uh, right now, um, I intend to take you live to the, uh, to the NAV station, the latest build, uh, which uh, Vladimir just introduced to you. Um, so that's my um, that's my goal now to uh, guide, quickly guide you through it. Um, 
<clears throat> I hope everybody can see my screen right now. Uh, that's okay. Um, so this is the trusted desktop. As you see the dashboard where uh, Vladimir had briefly touched up on, I will not spend too much time on that. I'm working from an office environment. I'm not connected to sensors. Uh, I can briefly show you how it looks like on large screen. So this is what we're looking at right now, although the values are empty since I'm not connected to the sensors. Um, you know, in regard to passage planning, where we have done most of the changes in the scope of this release, you know, vessel particulars, we have subdivided it before we had only the vessel particulars. Now we have subdivided it in vessel dimensions and vessel particulars. And here you see, you can enter all these dimensions and values. Why do we have extended these dimensions? Simple reason to perform more accurate calculations uh, like freshwater allowance, like the draft under the mast. Uh, for example, we have the measurement here. We, we categorize this X. This is basically the distance from the off perpendicular to the highest object of the vessel. Uh, so we can predict the, uh, we can predict the, uh, uh, the, the actual air draft and trim conditions as well. Yeah. Going to passage planning at first sight, you don't might this not does not look that there are much changes have been done, but the devil is in the details. As usually said, you see we have added percentage of vessels breadth, and before this was this setting was universal for all default categories. We have now we have split it up, and you have an allowance to set all these criteria for each individual default category, right? So we also have added since uh, some industry, uh, maritime industry, branches of the maritime industry require uh, a an, an, uh, setting where you can uh, define uh, the engine room status per leg. This has been done. Uh, we also have changed here the settings for uh, so you can have multiple um, watch levels per individual lag instead of only one. So these are slight improvements which we have done, uh, which make a significant difficult, uh, difference and, and, and improve your uh, experience when it comes to planning the passage. Data collection, as we have mentioned, in our previous release, uh, approximately a year ago, we had uh, the port information uh, as an additional data layer. Of course, we always try to merge and harmonize all our features. Uh, in nav station and, and the port information now is plugged in into the passage plan as well. I will later guide you through the passage plan. The use of the highest high water in case the reference height value is unavailable is a significant change which we have implemented uh, to, to get a more accurate approach uh, to calculate overhead clearances. Yeah, the initial UKC, we have two empirical formulas of the Barris uh, uh, Barris formula available. We also have the flexibility whether you want to include the initial UKC if you want to consider the cat sock in the initial UKC evaluation, yes or no. Uh, so this is something we have set here. For the underkill clearance calculation, there is a number of equations available for this formula as well. Um, you know, please, you know, this, we, we are aware that the Barris formula is the most used formula uh, in the maritime industry to determine squat uh, for a simple reason. It's the ease of use and it's very practical consuming uh, as little as possible parameters uh, to get a, a reasonable accurate squat. Um, so that's why we have had there. What we have done as well in the passage plan template, we have really added um, also an advisory because these equations really, they have limitations in their use. Uh, we have been we have tried to create a kind of transparency, make you aware of these limitations as well. Overhead clearance calculations, um, you know, not every vessel has very much fluctuating drafts in the forward and the aft, but we can have the minimum draft as we had before, which is rather conservative, or we can apply a trim correction. And we also have split up the criteria. We have now one criteria for bridges and we have one criteria for overhead cables uh, just to, <coughs> so you can measure your compliance. Yeah, we have an allowance to define Delta and uniform. If your company does not has an allowance, it basically asks you to conduct a risk assessments when D and U or Delta and uniform are identified. If not, you can specify a value here if that's something you apply. So as you see, it's all flexible. 
uh, there's lots of options available here, which you can do, uh, but you can you know, define it if you have. We also have an algorithm that ignores the cat socks when your cross-track limits are within the outer boundaries of the thread channel or maintain that area. Yeah, safety parameters, Vladimir has touched up on it. We have an optional that you can have it uh, specify it per default category in the default values, or you can have it auto calculated as per the NP231, you know, that we have auto calculated the draft plus the underkill clearance, including underkill clearance allowance minus the height of tight, for example, the safety contour, safety depth, and, and of course, you can specify here whether you want to have it by multiplied by static draft or dynamic draft in regard to the deep contours. Yeah. <clears throat> Having all this in place, you know, you basically go passage planning as you have done before. I open a route here, uh, a, a coastal route uh, with some shallow waters here. And then if I click on the passage plan, for those who are familiar with uh, the pa previous uh, versions of passage plan, um, uh, you will directly at first sight see some significant differences. Also in the menu here, you see that the menu has changed on the left pane. And we also have a drop down where you can enter voice stability parameters. Um, why have we added those? There's a number, a set of calculations in our full UKC sheet, which allow you to calculate the fresh water allowance, which of course needs the TPCI, uh, the tons per centimeter immersion. But we also have the, you know, the, the dynamic heel, which requires um, the values of the uh, VCB, the uh, metacentric height and VCG as well. Um, the first page, as you see, is auto-populated. The Admiralty title of table, we have added the title graph. You can hoover over the title graph to see the exact title height at any specific time. You can even uh, enter this in UTC or LT, and you see that automatically it does the conversion of time zones. The draft, uh, uh, the departure and arrival draft figures, they're entered in the passage plan now. Yeah, and also if you, Calculate if you have entered the uh, forward midships and off draft, it automatically calculates the mean draft, the trim, the air draft, and the volume of displacement has to be entered and automatically calculates the block coefficient, which again is a more important parameter to determine the effect of squat. Yeah, you see that as some of the sport information is automatically populated, it's also automatically synchronizing. So if I now take you to uh, the geometry, so in the chart, and I go to waypoint number one, which is all the way up here, it will find, and I have to switch on the ports database for easy visualization. You see that my first waypoint is here, yeah? And this is the port, this is a terminal, these are terminals, and the small dots, these are quays, yeah? If I, for example, change my lag over here and I go back to my passage plan. You see right now that it is still on the old, uh, on the old, you see the Emma Haven Basin. If I now click on this one, it will automatically find the nearest one. So the geometry is synchronizing with the, you see, it's now the floating jetty, it's a different jetty, you know, and it's all automatically uh, uh, s uh, synchronizing. You see, there's a number of uh, values which are pre-populated. It's automatically taken from the ports database, very comprehensive tool uh, in the appraisal stage of your planning. Uh, definitely worth looking into it. I will not touch up the details of that subscription service, but uh, you will have a similar layout of your arrival port page, as you see here. Yeah, also the all information uh, relevant for your port. And we also know that, for example, port communications, they're not the same everywhere. So, I mean, we have a number of defaults here, but you can basically reselect another one if other service providers are available. Then we have the general notes part one. Yeah, you can, of course, subdivide your passage plan into bird to pilot, pilot to pilot, pilot to bird uh, for easy uh, categorization. You see the NAFTAC stations here and the covering legs are nicely listed within the passage plan. A new feature as well is that we automatically find radio calling endpoints within the margins of your XTDs or when crossing a reporting line and it's automatically populated based on the chart 
uh, information. We have the opportunity to create action points event marks. This is something, of course, your Agdis also has, uh, but these you want to also populate in your passage plan. You know, this is basically an extension of a waypoint where you can add these action points and specify them, right? So this is also nicely listed in the passage plan and we auto calculate the passage time of any of these action points, you know, and when you're passing this in local time and UTC. Yeah. Then of course, there is also room for uh, instructions to voice by the charter party or from the master, some specific instructions. This route has no overhead obstacles. I will soon find one which has uh, to touch up on this one. You see here the overhead clearance criteria is nicely listed in the header, but also the title picking range, of course, where we use for to determine the overhead clearance and the air draft here, which is calculated based on the trim, which I have set in my settings. Yeah. Going to part A, you see that uh, we have added information to security level hardening requirements here. We have merged this cell. You can set here whether you set it in the waypoint during waypoint editing or you basically do it in the passage plan itself. Whether you do it here or whether you do it in the passage plan, it really doesn't matter because it synchronizes, right? So uh, also here, the engine room status. Don't be misled by the engine room status as we have implemented in our passage plan there is always room for discussion and there's also room for flexibility so this is our uh, demonstrator version where we have added all this information but you see you can change here er1 or you can change the navage levels or you add or remove it based on you know whatever is needed but it's all pre-populated by the values in the default tables where we previous versions we had a more conservative approach you know into uh, determining the initial UQC. In the previous versions, the initial UQC was the chart depth minus the vessel static draft. We have gone away, we slightly moved away, migrated from that conservative approach where we now have the identified water depth here as in the chart. This is the shallowest depth within the margins of your XTD. These are the positions of the shallowest position the shallow chart depth. This is the passing time of the shallow chart depth. And this is the nearest tidal station and the corresponding tidal height at the passage time of that shallow position. Yeah, based on this plan speed, set speed for that lag, we also calculate the squat based on this formula. Yeah, um, but then we have the initial UKC and whether you want to reduce or re deduct the cat sock from the initial UKC evaluation, yes or no. Then I go back again to the settings, you know, and this was something you could set here. So something to consider. It requires some time to familiarize with all these new features, but uh, trust me, it is very flexible. Yeah. You also have, what we have added is uh, the option to navigate directly to full UKC page when your initial UKC evaluation is negative or not compliant. Yeah. You see that the chart portrayal settings are automatically calculated based on the settings, which I have set in the configuration settings. And also for, you know, uh, for, for the sake of transparency and clarity to the navigator, we have add a note here. So one of the items in these bearers formula is the factor S, which is the cross-sectional area. And the factor S, the cross-sectional area is determined by uh, B, which is the vessel's width of influence. But then again, you should always perform a full UKC calculation when the Channel Canal River fairways width is narrower than the vessel's width of influence, because that can, you know, increase the effect of squat. And this is allowed in the full UKC pages. Yeah. So this formula can be used in open and confined water conditions whenever you have a transit in a channel or whatever. It is recommended to perform a full UKC calculation. Yeah. We also have subdivided the passage plan. We did not previously do that. You can bird to pilot, pilot to pilot, and pilot to bird. Yeah. It's easy in a waypoints where you can set your commencement of sea passage and of sea passage and where you can set events related to a voyage where you can uh, set these items yeah the cat sock uh, suak evaluation before we only mentioned the cat sock whether it was alpha one alpha two bravo charlie or delta uniform yeah right now we also pre-calculate the sounding accuracy based on the identified ZOC value, right? And then we identify that based on that identified shallow step. Yeah. 
part C. Uh, what has been added here is basically the uh, uh, intervals and the verification methods has been merged in one cell. Yeah, the turn radius can be changed within the passage plan, and we also have the rate of turn calculated. And if you see, if I change my turn rate, it automatically also recalculates my uh, rate of turn. So this is also a nice additional feature, you know, giving you uh, a, a little bit um, uh, insights on how much velocity, <laughs> the, the velocity of your turn will be uh, with a, a certain course alteration at a certain waypoint, yeah? <clears throat> Lag safety parameters, CPA, TCPA limits have been entered, and these are also picked from the default category tables. Yeah, these can be set. You see also that this lag is set as coastal, coastal, coastal. Yeah, and the whole route goes on here. My pilot is very channel. You see that the margins here are different than which I have for coastal. So this is automatically drawn from the table. And of course, there always is need to add or uh, implement additional information here where you can have these uh, settings set. So you can add information to a particular waypoint as you please. Yeah, charts and publications has been always, you know, a pain point in the previous versions, but we have cleaned it up. Instead of having duplicated information for every single waypoint, we have now grouped the waypoints, you know, from bird to pilot, pilot to pilot, pilot to bird, and, you know, map them based on, you know, uh, uh, when whether they consume the same charts uh, or not. You see also the publications used here. They're just similar for this selection of lags. Yeah. Also user charts, always nice to mention. If you have user charts in use, and we have added two sections, for example, if you're using any charts or publications, which are unfortunately not currently available in the digital in the digital format, like uh, security charts or maybe, um, uh, what is it, um, ocean, ocean passages for a world, or it may be uh, weather routing charts or whatever, you can enter these here as well, uh, just, you know, to prove that you have to taken this in consideration uh, in, the, in the planning stage of your, of your voyage. Additional notes, as Vladimir has entered, uh, said, additional notes page, at first sight, it looks the same, but it also accommodates the log uh, of the, um, the log of the uh, uh, revisions, if you have made any. Additionally, we have voyage squad figures. You can see the increase or draft or uh, the uh, draft, including the increase and with red values, whether you will be getting into troubles uh, and it's measuring your min and max speed and also from your uh, beginning, from your max static draft, you see. And also here there is clarity on the uh, approach of uh, the squat calculations. All the parameters uh, used to calculate squat are nicely listed here in the sheet, including the values. Yeah. Going back to these full UKC calculations, and I just take it easy because I had an initial UKC uh, where I was uh, not complying like this one. I basically can click on this page, create a full UKC, and for the ease of use, it already uses drafts, which I have. You see the graphs. There is a drawing, the depth plus the height of tide. You see the height of tide here is automatically populated based on the passing tide of the shallow depth identified from the ATT plugin. There's also here the changes in predicted sea level. The mean sea level pressure is 1,013 millibar. So if I have, for example, 1,018, you see that there is a deduction of five centimeters and the height of tide as well, yeah? Then we have all these referring back to these voyage stability parameters where we have added, uh, I think uh, it's all about automation. And you see that here we have the freshwater allowance, which you can set basically here. I have now clicked on the freshwater allowance. You see when this voyage is, for example, a transit in a, a tidal river uh, or, or uh, where it's freshwater, uh, or it is maybe brackish water, you can even specify the density here and it's automatically calculating your sinkage. Of course, there is also room to manually enter any changes. The same with the increase due to list. If I have a one degree list, you see that they have 28 centimeters sinkage approximately, but you can also have the dynamic heel, which is taken in consideration the turn angle and the sharpness of the turn as well as you see. 
Yeah, so including the dynamic heel with a turn radius 0 0.3 nautical miles and a speed of 7 meters, I might be tipping over 1.3 meters. The same with the effect of squat, and then I touch up again on these vessels width of influence B, where B is the value within the cross-sectional area determination. You see that you can also simulate another speed. The planned lag speed is eight, but for example, if there is a current in my favor or in my disadvantage, I can add that here and you see it automatically updates the squat value based on this, yeah? Also here, if the measured fit width of the fair and there's also, if you hoover over with the mouse, you see it has some uh, notification, yeah? where you have this. So if I, for example, am having a transit in a channel, which is less than this predefined uh, width of influence, and I add here 180, you see that my squat is increasing significantly. Yeah. Yeah. You also have here the selection of formulas. This, of course, should be according to your company SMS standard. Whatever is deselected in the settings will not be available in the passage plan either, right? As you see now, it's refreshing. I see that I only have one formula available, yeah? So this here is how you do. Also for the clarity, cat socks, automatically, this lag has a cat sock Bravo, which is the SUAC version, the zoning accuracy is 1.2 meters and the position accuracy is 50 meters approximately. We also have added drawing here and a table for easy referencing for the navigator. Yeah, and then we have the Yukaria Yuki C for coastal, which in my table is 30% of the dynamic draft for a coastal transit. I have a sufficient Yuki C and of course there is also some industries like the tanker industry, which allow the user to, you know, ignore the cat sock if the available UKC is higher than the cat sock uncertainty. So you can basically have a yes or no. Yeah, right now I have ignored it. If I include it, you see that my required minimum UKC is not met and you maybe want to do further analysis of that particular lag. You also see that the tidal window is available here. The tidal window is available at certain times for safe passage. The minimum required tidal height for safe passage is 2.32 meters. Yeah, and you see there is also a drawing here showing you and also the time represented in local time and UTC on when that time slot or when that tidal height is available. Yeah, um, significant changes. I did not touch up on the overhead clearance calculations yet, which is the last part which I wish to cover uh, during this, um, uh, during this presentation, uh, let me find a route which has a nice bridge somewhere. Um, this one has several bridges, uh, so we use this one, especially in the North Ostsee Canal in Germany. And then I go directly to the passage plan part B, uh, making sure that I also have drafts entered. I have drafts entered, taking you to part B. Uh, no, my apologies to general notes part two. Yeah, and you see slowly it will populate here this list with identified override clearances. It's calculating the root parameters and you see here it comes. So what we have done, we have differentiated here what the actual uh, cable is. It's a transmission line. This bridge is a fixed bridge. Yeah, so there's like different categories of all of these. The tidal station, nearest tidal station identified. I see for all the other overhead obstacles, there was no tidal station in the vicinity really, or at least not in the vicinity of the tidal data picking range, which is 10 nautical miles in my settings. The object name, if it has a name in the chart, it will automatically populate it. The vertical object position, the object passing time in UTC and local time, the vertical clearance as in a chart. Sometimes in some occasions you might have, what is it, a lift bridge or a swing bridge, uh, whatever, uh, which has a, a value which you might want to override. So we have uh, added flexibility here to override this. So then you basically just can override this. There's also room for notes and remarks. And as you say, you know, my air draft is 39.37 meters and that is you know considering my trim as well yeah going to for example one of these lags where i have an overhead clearance calculation for example waypoint 43 as shown here it is still also <clears throat> you know 
drawn into the full UQC calculation as well. So over here, lag 43 has an overhead obstacle. Yeah, it says Holbrook runs Buttle, and you see it automatically appears within a drawing as well. And then the upper section of the under queue clearance calculation, overhead clearance calculation page is uh, concerning the overhead clearance calculation, you see. Yeah, and you also see that now the highest high water is taken in consideration because the reference height of the object is not found. Yeah, but that's a setting. If you have deactivated uh, the consideration of highest high water when the reference height is not found, it will um, it, it it will ask you to enter the value. So <laughs> all the new changes of NAV <laughs> station in a nutshell or a passage planner in a nutshell, uh, I can also demonstrate a revision before I call it an end of the webinar. Going to my uh, list of routes and passage plans, you see here, these are approved passage plans and I have a number of revisions of some of them already. So if I just take this one here and I have already done a revision number three and I really want to revise this again, it is approved, it is an approved passage plan, but it's not locked for editing, you see. If I, for example, change anything when it comes to the scheduling, uh, I will increase the uh, speed for this set of legs here into 11 and, you know, 11 nautical miles, you see it automatically recalculates. Uh, going to um, the passage plan and I go to the additional notes page, you see that the previous revisions made are already here and it asks me also to justify my revision and I just will say oh, schedule um, or whatever. You can add as many or as little information as you want here really. Yeah, I simply click on approve again. Approve the current passage plan. <clears throat> yeah, and here it is. And then it will appear in my list again as well. Um, going to my list with revised passage plans. And then going to my list with revised passage plans. This will be in the list right now. So uh, seeing here, this is my last revision. Last revision made. Additional notes page. I see that there is a nice log of revisions and of course the amended changes which you have made, whether that's a speed value, whether that's a course change or whatever, you know, the affected waypoints is a modification and you hear weather parameters. You can basically add the justifications. Uh, whatever text you have entered here before will remain uh, and it of course will be represented in the passage plan template. Um, being short on time, and I think I'm already over time. I think uh, <laughs> I have to, uh, I have to, uh, you know, call it. <laughs> stop, uh, stop sharing my screen, and 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 uh, well, thank you for your attention. Of course, we will answer some more questions uh, in in demand, and then we'll be happy to touch up on that. If if these new passage plan, if you're thrilled to uh, get hands-on experience. If you want to use it, please contact your account manager. If you're not with NAFT or Asper today, just reach out to us, uh, send an email, uh, customer support, whatever, and just uh, get it up. Uh, we will. We are happy to provide you with trials and information, and and, and provide you with more information uh, if if all these new changes have captured your interest. Um, Richard, back to you. Thank you very much. And it's great to see the passion. My colleagues are both quite uh, quite engaged and love the topics they're saying, which, which shows in the uh, the length of the presentation. So we're we're running to close to an hour now, but we'll try and keep the next section brief. But we know this is where people find uh, interest and in the questions are. So I'm just going to briefly recap what we've seen in very brief is for now station. Uh, new passage monitoring dashboard and lots of technology changes through um, updates to passage planning mode, um, uh, updates to the monitoring every, everywhere through the system it's, it's been updated. Passage plan itself has been updated to uh, meet the latest industry compliance standards with more automation and more auto calculations, which we'll touch on, I'm sure, in the Q&A session, but it's been also touched on by my colleagues, both Vladimir and Vatimo. So that just leads us to move to the Q&A session. So what I'm going to